All right, so if you ever take a painting class, chances are they're going to start you off with doing a little painting like this. This is a uh, still life study of an apple. Uh, it took me about 45 minutes or an hour, just like a rough sketch. So I'm going to walk you through this, just give you the highlights um, about how I did it, kind of how I built a paint, how, you know, how I built it from uh, uh, thin paint to thick paint, dark to light, and working the painting as a whole. So that's what I'm going to be going over today. All right, so I just got a canvas pad here. I got my colors. Uh, I got uh, my, all my colors listed in the description below if you want to see all of those. And what I'm doing here, I'm just using a, um, I think it's a number zero uh, ivory flat to draw in just the basic outline shape of the apple. And I'm just using red, not because red is the color of the apple. Uh, I just like to use uh, uh, cadmium red to kind of draw things out. Uh, I've been doing it for a while. I feel comfortable doing it like it's, you know, it's a good uh, color to kind of draw things out with. And I'm just keeping it really loose right now. Uh, I don't get too tight with my original drawings. Uh, I just kind of leave it open and I'll adjust it as I go all the way till the, to the end. I'll be adjusting the, the drawing as I go. And I feel like when I have a looser drawing, it, you know, allows me to be more loose with the painting as a whole. I don't get caught in just the coloring inside the lines which can happen if you get too rigid. All right, now for, I'm just gonna, uh, I've broken the apple down, if you can see, kind of just into two basic areas, the light and the dark side, uh, just like Star Wars. And I like to keep things simple and just work step by step. Like I don't try and go straight into a lot of detail right away. Like here, I've just kind of blocked out the uh, sh uh, shadowed part of the apple. Now I'm going into the lighter parts, mixing up some Cad okay, red, adding a little yellow, a little titanium white, and I don't work on one particular area at a time to completion and then move on to the next area. I really work it all as a whole. I find that to be very helpful. Uh, even the background, you'll see I'll go put in the background in, and because I want to see how everything's working together, and I'm just constantly adjusting, cost, constantly pushing and pulling. It, it might feel awkward at first. I know it did for me to paint everything you know all the aspects I want to kind of hop around but really try and force yourself to do that even if you have to like set a timer at one point in time like I would actually just set a timer for every like two minutes and just force myself to jump to a different area that's a good exercise to do like see right here I'm, I'm already putting in the background because this background will help me paint the apple if you don't have the background there it's like not having a tool to build something because I can reshape the outline of my apple here and also having this very very dark background I need to have that to determine how bright I want to make my apple because the darker that background is the brighter my apple is going to look if I paint my apple to completion and then I put that dark background in and I realize oh I didn't make you know I made my apple too bright because I was trying to make it bright against a white background not a black background and now I have an apple that's not really working in relative to the appropriate background this also helps with colors like I will use that color that I have for the background I will just mix that straight into the red that I have to do the shadows on the apple and this really adds like a color harmony like if you're con if you just have all the colors on your palette from the whole painting and you're constantly mixing it in, the, in together and using certain colors to darken other colors different aspects of the painting it will really make all your colors work together and seem like they're all you know in the same painting and have a good harmony to it. So I'm uh, sketching in the shadow here at the bottom. I just kind of really want to get all of the area around the apple, uh, just enough. Like you know, I'm not bringing it all the way to the edge of the page. I'm one. This is just a sketch, and two, I just um, even if I was going to bring it all the way out to the edge of the page, just for the sake of the uh, the painting, like I'm just going to put enough there. So I know the information that I need to make decisions. So I don't need to bring the background or the table, the apples on, you know, all the way to the edges to get what I need to make decisions on colors within the apple. And see here, I'm doing what I said. Like I've taken that, my dark background color and just put, you know, put it in the shadow colors of the, the apple because light is always reflecting other light and you'll, you know, it's, it's reflecting the light that's around it. So you'll see colors 
in objects that are being reflected from the colors and other objects around it. <laughs> so now I'm getting into a lot of uh, some thicker paint here. I, I found a lot of people when they're starting out struggle with knowing how thick to make their paint and how thin to make it. And it's really just going to come with practice. You get a feel for the paint and what the paint can do. And I just make it thick enough to do what I want. Like I'll, I'll keep, you know, I'll put some down if it's like, oh, it's not thick enough. I'll thicken, you know, I'll, I'll load a little more paint onto my brush to make the mark that I want to make. And that's what I did with that, you know, brighter red up at the top of the apple is that paint's thick. It's not the thickest paint that's going to be on the apple, but it's definitely thicker than the layer that's underneath it. And now that I put that, that layer, that lighter um, red on top of the apple that's in the light, uh, it's influenced me on the shadows because I realized, oh, my shadow's not dark enough. So I went back and adjusted my shadow. And this is what I mean when I'm constantly comparing colors and comparing lights and darks and why I like to have all the information of the whole painting to be making decisions and not just work one area to completion then move to the next area. All right, now there was this area of, it was a very, uh, like kind of pinkish uh, reflective because there was, um, this was taken from uh, this Apple photo I took. There was, the main source light was a really warm light, but there was, uh, it was taking a room that had a window and some um, lighter blue light from outside was coming in and left this cool little uh, area of red in the middle of the apple that you can see. So I used some crimson, so this is a cooler red and started working in that. I haven't fully developed it yet in the painting, but I'm just like establishing there just because I want that information to make decisions on other areas of the painting. Now my paint's getting a little thicker as I'm getting more into the highlights. I'm kind of defining that upper lip of the apple uh, where it goes down into the stem. I'm just taking it one highlight at a time. Now I'm taking just straight white and putting my highlights. Let's see how that's going to be working with everything, like in the shape. And you really want the those highlights to pop. It really pulls the, uh, the whole painting together. Everybody likes painting the highlights. Now I'm going to lighten up the yellow part. There's a small little yellow part behind the stem. Lighten that up. Now that I put my highlight in, it makes me readjust everything to that highlight. I can lighten up the top of the apple here. And you've probably seen as I've, I've, I've gone on, I've kind of redrawn the apple as I go uh, with the red, kind of reshaped the, the edges along the, uh, the darker background. I'm pushing the shadow a little more, one a little more defined shadow. So on the left side, pushing it there. Now I'm softening the edge of the shadow. This is kind of hard to identify a lot of times, but with these shadows, you don't really want a hard, crisp line. Uh, so you see me softening the edge of the shadow there. Kind of makes it read more natural. And I want it to pop a little more, so I'm pushing the light to make the dark pop out a little more. And also having the right side of this uh, table a little lighter than the left side. A little variance because the light is coming in from the right side of the picture. I'm going to the detail. I got a really small rigger here and a little stem. And then the top highlight. And a couple more highlights. But, you know, I could keep working this more and more. I just wanted to show you a quick, rough sketch of kind of how I go about building a painting. Uh, like I said before, uh, if you take like an oil painting class, like this is most likely what they're going to have you do right from the start. Got some canvas paper and they'll have you just do, you know, a quick study of a, of a still life, you know, for the duration of the class might be like an hour, two hours, you know, all a prima, you do it all there. <clears throat> this isn't really like an, it's more of an exercise, good exercise to do. If you can do it from life, it's really good to do it from life. If you can't, don't worry about it. Just take a picture. I know it's hard to set up, uh, you know, uh, one of those dark boxes and the light and, you know, have room and everything. 
I didn't do it. <laughs> I probably could have, but I just for this, you know, I want to do something that you can do at home. So I just used a picture. Feel free to use this picture if you wanted. I can go online and use other pictures. It's just an exercise. You're not going to get nabbed with copywriting or anything. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.